Shalom, Yashorah Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. And hey man, I want to do this video. This video, I don't know the name of it right now. It's probably going to be in regards to Through the Chaos, Knowledge and Wisdom Shall Be Thy Stability. And I want to read the scripture that that references. It's Isaiah 33, I'll start at 5. It says, The Most High is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. And the reason why I'm doing this, all of y'all brothers who've been keeping up with all the different events, man, you got fake. Well, I ain't going to say fake. You got presidential candidate assassinations. You have presidents set, stepping down and being replaced by the first quote unquote black women presidential candidate. You have a lot of the, the issues with OPEC. For those of y'all brothers who don't know, Saudi Arabia, they pulled out of their petrodollar deal with America. So you can see America is waning off of the power they had over the globe, especially when it comes to the oil system. Not only that, but you also have the issues with Russia, China, going with Ukraine in the, in the Western world, NATO. I mean, bro, there's the laundry list of stuff going on. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I want you brothers to remain stable. Because what does the scripture say? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. All throughout the scriptures, the Most High talks about you have to have stability in your mind to be able to deal with all the things going on. Because even regular people in the world, they're starting to notice that there's something weird going on with the society. Because the societal order that America and the Western powers used to have is shifting. And the people who live in this country, they need to be well aware because most people have not gone through the fall of Rome. Most people have not gone through the fall of the Byzantine Empire. We're currently witnessing it right now. And each and every day as America starts to weaken itself, you who believe in the Most High, who believe in his son, Yahweh Shah, you're going to have the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to deal with this while everybody else around you continues to walk on by like nothing's happening. Which is ironic because I'm talking this and people are walking by as if nothing's happening. And this is nothing new. This has been going on for millennium. All throughout the years when all the prophets would come out and speak to the people, there would be people who just wouldn't take heed to the lesson. They wouldn't take heed to the vision. They wouldn't understand what's going on. And eventually they would get caught up and swept. So for those of y'all brothers who the most high is instilling with knowledge and wisdom to be able to see what's going on, you are going to be the ones who the Lord is going to protect. Because a lot of people don't understand this. Let's actually just get the verse real quick. This is Matthew chapter 16 and verse 1. It says the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the time. So what Mashiach Yahweh Shah, a.k.a. quote unquote Jesus Christ is letting you know. You are a hypocritical believer if you can look at the weather and tell that a storm is approaching, but you can't discern the times of the spiritual storms that's going to come upon the earth. Because it's very clear. I mean, even four or five years ago with the whole C-19 and the, you know, the pandemic and things like that, it was very clear that the world was shifting. The world is changing. But within the last six months, the last year, the last two years, things is literally speeding up. So essentially... What I'm speaking to you guys is you have knowledge of the times. You have knowledge and an understanding of what's happening around you. And how do you build up the knowledge? Well, you read the word and you under, you allow the Most High to show you, according to his holy prophecies, his holy word, what's going to come upon the earth. Because he did not give this knowledge to everybody. He only gave it to those who were meant to get it and who are meant to see and who are meant to understand. Let's actually get this real quick. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to go to, let's see. Yeah, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. It says, Hamashiach answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, to them it is not given. So what's one of the mysteries of the kingdom? One of the mysteries of the kingdom is that before the kingdom will come, before that spiritual woman shall birth a kingdom that will last forever, she will go through massive, massive birthing pains. And the birthing pains spiritually symbol symbolize the pestilences, symbolize the division amongst the people. You have a growing divide between the right and the uh, left, the Republicans and the Democrats. I even see a lot of people on Twitter who are talking about how 
uh, based off of the Olympics and what's going on with the opening ceremony, how they're blatantly practicing Satanism, Satanic principles. And these are things even four or five years ago was not on mainstream Twitter, was not on mainstream Instagram. So the Most High is revealing the truth about this world each and every day. As the scripture says, the light, I mean, the, the, uh, there is nothing that, shall, that, that, that is hidden shall not come into the light. All the things of the dark will come into the light. And what we're starting to see is that the people who run this society, the high-ranking elites, mainly the Caucasian Jews and all of the other families, the high-ranking families of Esau and the other nations, they're showing you what this world is actually about. That's why when you open up your phone on social media, the things that you try to hide from your mind and say, we only talk about that in church, we only talk about that with a conspiracy theorist, is now all throughout your feed. Because the Most High is showing you that this is the reality of what you're living in. And once people understand the reality, then the tribulation will come. So yeah, we're going to continue on. This is Matthew 13 and 11. I'll read it again. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even what he had. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And this is going into the aspects of, even though the signs are showing to be plain, they're right in front of your face, you can hear the words, they're coming into your uh, hearing box and being computed in your mind, you're not able to understand, you're not able to digest, it's not comprehending unto you. So basically, Hamashiach is saying only certain people will be able to truly understand what's going on and not be hypocritical in the way that they view the world, the way that they view the events of this earth, man. So I want to get into the knowledge of the prophecy because there's no point reading the Bible if you're not able to understand the prophecies that the Most High laid out, especially when it comes to the world that we live in. There's literally no point going, into ch going to church and praying to the Most High or quote unquote praying to God and believing in Jesus if you do not understand the Most High's will because the Most High's will is literally the spirit of prophecy. I wanna to go to the book of Matthew chapter 24 and I'll actually start at, I'll start at verse seven. It says, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in, in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And one thing that people oftentimes overlook is they do not understand the timeline and the perspective of the Most High when it comes to the times of this earth. The Most High created everything. He is the author. So a lot of people read this and think, oh, well, there's been wars in the past. So just because there's wars, that doesn't mean the end has come. No, you have to be able to piece everything together and discern when these things are coming on the earth, right? I'm gonna keep going. It says there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. So a lot of these events are set up. Sometimes a famine takes 10, 20 years to get set up. Sometimes war takes 10 to 20 years. When you look at the history of World War II, that wasn't something that happened overnight. It was building pressure, building tension with Nazi Germany, the uh, Axis powers like Italy, Japan, who were coming against a lot of the European powers. People think that, oh, World War III is gonna happen literally tomorrow. There are events that lead up to something before the quote unquote powder keg or the bullet takes off to start war. So a lot of y'all brothers who've been doing a lot of, um, you know, history on the geopolitical climate, you can clearly see that things are being set up in a specific direction. Yeah, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen over a month. There are a lot of false prophets who prophesied saying it was gonna happen in 2022, in 2019, and 2021. Not only just Israelites, but also a lot of these Christian bug outs. But ultimately, the, the, the picture of the Most High and what was going to happen with his word is coming more and more into fruition. The Lord is revealing more and more. So you brothers need to have the knowledge of what's to come in the end. So that way you're not shocked because a lot of people are going to become very traumatized when they go into the store and they don't have food. Or when there's another quote unquote P-L-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, right? Or if, let's say, example, China decides they want to invade Taiwan and America has to call up troops. A lot of guys who think this can never be a possibility, they're not going to have knowledge of the Most High and His will. That's one of the key aspects of having knowledge of the Most High and His prophecy is that when you hear stories about civil war, when you hear stories about a potential pandemic, when you hear stories about um, a potential world war, it's not shocking to you because you've been reading this, you've been reading the Most High's holy word for years and years or even months and months. So you're going to be more prepared. What does the scripture say in Proverbs? It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil 
and hideth himself. And where do you hide yourself? You hide yourself in the secret place of the Most High. You don't hide yourself in Cancun. You don't hide yourself in Thailand. You don't hide yourself in underground bunkers that you think are foolproof of any type of bombs and nukes. You hide yourself in the secret place of the Most High because only the elect, only the people who the Lord is dealing with are going to be saved by the Most High. Everybody else who doesn't believe, they're open season. It's gonna be open season, it's gonna be purge season. That's how a war society happens. That's how a civil war society happens. That's how a society that lacks the, the natural things that you need to survive each and every day happens. When cryptocurrency becomes a thing, when the fiat currency of the dollar that you've known and loved your entire life becomes no more and the system is changed and they implement chaos and you don't know what to do, those people are going to be open season. But only the people who have a knowledge of the Most High, His will, and know of the secret place and know how to get into that secret place, those are going to be the people who are fine. And that's why, as the scripture said, knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time. And also get into this. Because I see a lot of people on the internet, if your brothers go on Twitter, you know, TikTok, wherever y'all go to get a lot of understanding on what's going on spiritually. You have a lot of people who are coming out and saying that the Most High is showing them things, right? And I'm talking about in regard to that incident with Trump. A lot of people believe that the Most High is, quote unquote, has divine intervention with Donald Trump. And that, when people say stuff like that, it shows that they don't have a true knowledge of the Most High. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why. Because not only do they not understand who the Most High deals with, not only do they not understand the Lord's will of America, but they don't understand who the Most High is working with. Donald Trump is not a believer of the Most High or his son. He's just a puppet master. So when you have all these people saying that God is with Trump and God spared Trump's life, you have no clue what you're talking about. Trump is on the team of Satan, literally. He's literally on the team of Satan. Why? Because he backs the fake, the false uh, state of Israel, right? He backs a lot of the different policies that literally go against the commandments of the Most High. And I don't want to get too deep into it because that's not important. But the reason why I'm saying is this is because most people do not understand who the Most High is. We're going to go to Zechariah chapter 13. I'll start at 7 because this is talking about this period. It says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it will come to pass that in the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and killed, but the third shall be left therein. So let me explain something. When you hear people online saying, may the Most High bless this country and may the Most High bless these people, what did I just read? The Most High is saying that two thirds of his own people are going to be killed and destroyed, right? I'm gonna tell you something that shows you the Lord, the, who the Lord is, who the Most High is, right? We're going to go to Joel, and we're going to go to chapter 3, and we're going to go into verse 2. It says, I'll read verse 30. It says, I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of Yahweh come. And it will come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Most High has said, and in a remnant whom the Lord shall call. So what the Most High is telling you is it's his will for the sun to be darkened. What does that mean? There's going to be a lot of supernatural events happening in the earth. And also that's talking about the smoke of the fire of the judgment of the Lord. Whether it be through war, whether it be through nuclear destruction, whether it be through chariots dropping bombs and slaying all the enemies of the earth. Because I'm going to read another thing that is a knowledge of the Most High, true knowing of the Most High, right? This is a Joel chapter 3 verse 1. It says, For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, meaning he's going to free Judah and Jerusalem from their captivity. That's what that's talking about. Verse 2, it says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, and I will plead them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the Most High's will is to gather all the nations to essentially, you know, go to battle with him. If you don't believe me, go to Revelation chapter 19 where Hamashiach says, are you ready to eat of the flesh of men? Meaning, are you ready to slay your enemies? 
That's the will of the Most High. That's the will of Hamashiach, quote unquote, who the world calls Jesus Christ. His will is to slay and destroy all enemies, all wickedness. His will ain't to pray for a country that's been oppressing his people for centuries and centuries and centuries. And that's the reason why I'm saying this, because a lot of people who proclaim to know God and proclaim to know God's will, they have never read the Bible, so they don't really understand what the Most High is going to do. And that's why when you go to the book of Zechariah chapter 13, I'm going to go back there real quick. This is the book of Zechariah chapter 13, and I'm going to go to verse 9. It says, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. So one of the will of the most high, knowledge of the most high, is that he's going to try one third of his people, the holy remnant of his people, to go through mass uh, tribulation, to go through adversity, to try them, to harden them in their faith and in their belief and in their uh, love for the most high, right? I keep going. It says, they will call upon my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say Yahweh is my God. So you have a lot of people who proclaim to be Christians or Catholics or Muslims. And a lot of these people are calling for world peace. The Most High's will is that the world is going to go into destruction and there will be a mighty sword upon all the people of the earth. So when you're praying for something that doesn't go against the Lord's will, how can you say that you really know him? Because even from the Lord's prayer, he says, thy will be done. That's the Lord's will. And a lot of you people who don't understand it do not have knowledge on who the true God of Israel, who Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is. And that's why so many people are not going to understand and be caught off guard in that times because they don't really know who the Lord is. And a lot of people say that God is against Satan. Well, let's read Isaiah 45 and 7 because even himself, he says this. He says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So the Most High is in control of all the good that comes and all the bad that comes. So when people pray to the Most High to stop the destruction of a wicked country like America, you do not understand the true will of the Most High because it's the Most High who's allowing these plagues to come on. Just like with Egypt, the Most High was allowing his death angels to come and sow discord, to turn the water into blood, to bring frogs on the people, to bring uh, locusts on the people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I forgot the other plague. I think it was like boils or something like that. And then the last plague was what? During the night of the Passover when he sent his death angel, a.k.a. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to slay all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. That's why when you read the will of Yahweh Shah in Revelation 19, it's very similar to the will of the Lord's death angel in the book of Exodus during the time of the Passover. So we have a knowledge of who the true God of the nation of Israel is. Not the God of this world, not the God in fake Jesus and white Jesus, a.k.a. Caesar Borgir, but the God of the Bible, the God who's a terrible and mighty powerful God who is willing to slay and destroy all the enemies of wickedness, of sin, and of death. And any nation who follows after that, his will is to destroy them as well. And that's just what the truth is. Yes, the scripture says to love thy enemy. Yes, the scripture says to pray for, pray for those you know who are persecuted things like that right but ultimately when it comes down to this world on a grand scale the lord's will is to destroy anybody who goes after sin who goes after reverie drunkenness fornication adultery etc 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 so i'm gonna start right here this first corinthians chapter 2 and 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of the most high in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. So the wisdom of the Most High is literally something that is a mystery, meaning it's not known, it's a secret to the vast majority of people on earth, right? Verse 8. It says, which none of the princes of the world knew it. So just because you're a prestigious dude, you're a prince, you're a king, you're a part of a certain fraternity or sorority or whatever, you don't even understand the will of the most high, the wisdom of the most high, right? It says, for they had known not, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And that's not even just talking about high ranking kings and princes, but it's also talking about many of our own people, the people who sit on high, the people who have the gold, who had the money, the, the fame, the status, and things like that. The carnal man, right? It says, verse 9, it says, But as it's written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High have prepared for them that love him. But the Most High have revealed them unto him by spirit. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How y'all doing? Good, man. It says, For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the Most High. What man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of the Most High knoweth no man but the spirit of the Most High. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High. 
that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High. Which things also we speak not in the word which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Spirit teach compare spiritual things with spiritual. So long story short, when you understand the spirit of the Most High and the wisdom that he obtains, it's very different from getting a degree at Harvard, a degree uh, where it was another place. I can't even think off the top of my head, Princeton, right? Or wherever a lot of these people go to get these bacchanalian uh, degrees or whatever, right? The bachelorette degree, right? Bachelor, bachelorette degree. The spirit of the Most High gives us the wisdom to understand the things that are of him. And one thing that the spirit does is it separates the unholy from the holy. And it also separates the lies from the truth. And that's the reason why brothers and sisters need to gird yourself up and be in these precepts. Because as I'm laying out for you, the true knowledge of the Most High is going to allow you to have a solid mind. Because what does the scripture say, 2 Timothy 1 and 7? The Most High did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, but of love and of a sound mind. A lot of people are starting to panic. A lot of people who proclaim to love Jesus and, and Christ, they are starting to panic. You can hear in how they make their tweets. You can hear it in these videos online. They're afraid. And don't get me wrong, you do have to understand that the, the judgment of the Most High is gonna be a very, very crazy, <laughs> hey, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be horrific, a lot of the things that are going to happen. But my point is, when you see all these different signs happening in the streets, happening across the world, what did Hamashiach say? He said, do not be dismayed because that's going to be the time that you're living in. Let's get it real quick. We're going to go to Matthew. I think it's chapter 24. Yeah. Matthew 24. And um, I'll just start at verse 10. It says, many will be offended and will betray one another slugging, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall wax abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So Hamashiach is just letting you know. That it's going to be such a bad time that the love of people, the love of the Bible, the love of the Most High, many people will lose that love due to all the lawlessness and the sin that's going to be placed in this world. And we have to understand that and understand that even when you're going through terrible times and say, y'all brothers, you might potentially lose your life. You might go into prison. You might be in prison. You will lose everything. But you have to go through these hard times in order to fulfill the Most High's will. Not your will, but the Lord's will. So now that we understand the aspect of the knowledge of the Most High, we kind of get into the wisdom. What is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is having a concrete understanding or a knowing of who the Most High is, what is his will, and essentially what's going to happen on earth. But wisdom is essentially where you apply that knowledge and you apply it to your everyday life to make sure you're able to discern properly and make the right decisions. So that way the Most High will choose you. Because a lot of people have knowledge, but they're not moving by the Spirit. A lot of people have a zeal of the Most High, but they don't have true knowledge of the Lord. And that's the reason why I said a lot of people who are Christians and who are talking about these things with Trump and all these different events, what they don't seem to understand is that you have to have real world wisdom of the Most High for him to be able to watch over you. Because again, the Lord watches over those who love him, who give their life to him. I'm gonna actually get this. We're gonna go to uh, Matthew, I think it's 23 or 22, where Hamashiach said, what is the one great commandment? What is the first great commandment? Hey, I couldn't find it, brothers, but y'all know what the one great commandment is, to love thy God with all thy mind, thy heart, and all thy soul. So basically, if you wanna have true wisdom of the Lord, you're gonna fulfill that commandment because that is the whole duty of man going into Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Here the whole conclusion of the matter, to fear the most high and keep his commandments for that is the whole duty of man. So the most high knows that those people who are doing those things, those are the ones who are truly abiding in wisdom because the spirit of wisdom is gonna give you what? It's gonna give you understanding. It's gonna give you discipline. And also you're gonna have the spirit to be able to make the right choices if you want to be of the Lord's elect. And also understand this, this is Proverbs 1 and 7. It says, the fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So for you to have wisdom and to take instruction, you have to fear the Most High. And as y'all understand, how do, you, how do you have fear of the Most High? 
to not only understand his way and to prepare for it, but also to do the things that he told you. And y'all brothers understand what's the will of the Most High to, to keep his commandments. I see a lot of people on IG, threads, Twitter, I, YouTube, bro. People keep on saying that you do not have to keep the Lord's commandments. Talking about the quote unquote law of Moses. I'm gonna read some scriptures for y'all so y'all understand what true wisdom is because the spirit of wisdom is a spirit that has been all throughout times from the beginning all the way to the times of uh, Abraham, all the way to the times of David, all the way to the times of Mashiach, when we were in, even when we were in captivity in Greek and Rome, etc., etc. The spirit of wisdom already knows what the Lord hates. And when you look at the spirit of wisdom, you're able to look back on what happened with your forefathers in the past and try to avoid and correct the mistakes that you're doing. Now, yes, we understand we are in a time of mercy due to the sacrifice of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, we are not completely condemned from not being able to keep the law. But what the scripture says in Romans chapter six and 15, is, well, let's get this first. This is Revelation 22 and 14, it says, blessed are they who do his commandments that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So it says that if you keep the commandments of the Most High, and you don't just do it off of the letter of the law or obligation, but you do it off of a true spirit and a desire and a love and a want to serve your higher power, you will have a right to the tree of life. And we already know the tree of life is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. That's what that tree of life in the Garden of Eden symbolized because Hamashiach is the, um, he is the breath of life, obviously, but he is the one who will allow you to receive everlasting life if you believe in him and if you follow him. So a part of that, and he even said it himself, he said, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments, right? And no, it's not talking about just the New Testament. It's talking about the will of the Most High because the will of the Most High is his commandments. It includes that, trust me. So I'm gonna get this as well. And even himself, Paul, he stated what, what that means, right? Because a lot of people, you know, essentially they conflate the aspect of grace, the aspect of mercy that the Lord has given them to dwell in lawlessness. Because if you do not have law, if you do not have commandments, by proxy, you're going to dwell in lawlessness because the law is what establishes order. This is Romans chapter 6, and I'll start at verse 15. It says, I'll read verse 14. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Meaning you are not to be condemned by the law of Moses that you can't keep perfectly, but you are under the grace. Meaning... You have grace from the judgment of not being able to keep that law through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, right? But verse 15, it says, what then shall we sin? Now, what is sin? Go to 1 John chapter 3 and 4. It says, sin is a transgression of the law, right? So basically, if you sin, it's because you're transgressing the law. And that's literally talking about the law of Moses. That's literally what it's talking about. Uh, keep going, though. It says, what then, shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? So Paul is asking, shall we be able to break the Most High's law just because we're under the grace? He said, Yahweh forbid. So aspects of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And if you fear the Lord, then you will do what? You will keep his commandments, receive his instruction. Let's go up. It says, Proverbs 1 and 2, it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give stability to the simple and the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. I'll go to verse 8. It says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Because again, the spirit of wisdom is personified as a nurturing spirit, as a mother in a certain extent. So the, so the spirit of wisdom is going to teach you and bring you into the understanding of the law so that way you can have discipline in your own life and you can avoid the wiles of this world because many people do not keep the Most High's law so the Most High doesn't give them any wisdom, man. Hey, how you doing, brother? What's good with you, man? Hey, you know the truth about the Israelites? Okay, what you think about it? But I want to get this. This is uh, James chapter 1 and 22, right? It says, James 1 and 22, it says, But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Because I'm going to ask y'all brothers a question. If you know of the Lord and you read the Bible, but you're not an embodiment of the word, will the Most High protect you? Will the Most High save you? Will the Most High look out for you when everybody else in the world is burning up? We're going to get this in 2 Ezra, and we're going to go to chapter, I think it's uh, 9 and 6. So this is the book of 2 Ezra, and we're going to go to chapter 9 and verse 6. 
It says, even so the times also the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And everyone that will be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby you have believed. So even in uh, the, the book of Second Ezra, he tells you that you will be able to escape by your works and by faith, whereby you have believed. So essentially what's going on is that you are able to escape by your works. Now, why is that? Because your works justifies your faith. No, we're not given salvation through our faith. I mean, through our works. But let's go to the book of... um. Let's go to the book of 1 James and we're going to go to chapter 2. This is the book of James chapter 2 and we're going to go down to, um, let me see. Yeah, this is James chapter 2 and we're going to go to verse 17. It says, even so faith, if it has not works, it's dead being alone yea a man may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works thou believe it that there is one god that doeth well the devils also believe and tremble but will you know O vain man that faith without works is dead so when you establish your faith through your works which we already know is to abide in the will of the most high to labor in the will of the most high that establishes your faith and when you go into second ezra chapter 9 and verse 6 or verse 7 it says, everyone shall be saved, not be able to be escaped by his works and by faith. So it's a synonymous relationship. They're symbiotic. They work with one another. You can't have one without another. You can't have faith without works and you can't have works without having true faith in the most high. So essentially, the most, when you understand the wisdom of the Lord, when you understand the fear of the Lord, Salakia, you obtain the wisdom to know his will, keep his commandments. And like I said in uh, James chapter 1 and verse 22, you will be a doer of the word. Because when you understand in Matthew, what if Mashiach say is the worst thing that you can hear? He said, go away from me, workers of iniquity. What does that mean? You're not abiding in the will of the Most High. So don't, how you doing? So when you ain't abiding by the way of the Lord, what's going to happen is that you are essentially going to be spewed out of his mouth. And I'm going to show you something. Because a lot of people don't really understand the word. They don't understand the law. I'm finna go to Isaiah 66, chapter 6 and verse 4. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, how y'all doing? Y'all y'all visiting? Y'all y'all seem like y'all new. Well no, we're from Dallas. Okay. You know y'all can come close and you don't gotta be strange. You got to stop taking me for those we we seen you uh making a video. You look how, it's a rough, but Yeah, how y'all doing? What's your name? Pretty good, Armani. Nice. Armani. I'm, I'm pregnant by Israelite right now. Okay. But I don't think I'll, he practiced his word good enough. Okay, you know, that's funny. You came by, I said, be a doer of the word, not a hearer, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what y'all think about it? It seems like y'all kind of know a little bit about it. Oh, yeah. Well, we do. I, I, look, I, I grew mean, up in church. From I, what I feel, no, no, he's an Israelite. It's different. Right, it's different. It's different. I know. Cause I'm, I, I grew up different. Baptist. Okay, I, okay. I grew up like Baptist, and, you know, it's a, it's a whole different thing. It's a little feel different. about the multiple wives thing? Is that what you mean like is it big as in is it bad or is it big as in is it popular is that what is that something that, that y'all really do how you feel yeah, about some, it some brothers do it yeah some brothers, no, some brothers. brothers. Some brothers. yeah because when it comes to taking care of wife you know wife is a blessing right y'all agree with that you know the yeah. bible says you can find a virtuous woman she's rare than rubies so it's a lot that comes to it than just dealing with a female like how people in the world where you just talk to them you date them you have sex with them and then you just leave them behind the bible yeah it tell you to take care of the women that is in front of you yeah so it's not like you could just have three girls and be a playboy or something like that you gotta like really care for them and, and want to see their best so i would tell you this some brothers do do it because they like you know they like israelite yeah. women you know what i mean hey i say it like this would you want one blessing from the lord or three so sometimes men get multiple blessings I have you know? a but i'm gonna say it um, but go ahead go ahead, go ahead. One, you know is it Okay. Is it like a sin? I wouldn't say that. I feel like if for you to have all these women, you should be able to take care of Provide all of them. Provide for them? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to take care of all of them, mm -hmm. should you not have them? Yeah, you, I wouldn't tell you to do that. No, but I'm saying, is it in the word that you're not supposed to have all these women if you cannot take care so of all So I them? don't know the exact verse, but it says if you take another wife, her raiment, her clothes, and I think um, it has something to do with sex, will not decrease. Let's say you like you know King Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. 
How many wives did he have according to the Bible? I don't know how many he had, but he was a king and he wasn't. He had about 700, right? He had about 700. You think he was. You think he was put. You think, you think he was like taking care of them like how he should be? No. Of course. Not all of them, no. Didn't his cat, didn't he fall? Yeah, he failed because a lot of the women he didn't test them and they was. Work, allowing him to worship false gods. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't that, that he that had sense. multiple wives because you know King David, right? Yeah. He had multiple wives. I think okay. he had twelve. Oh, so King that. David and had multiple wives, and he did. Wives, he, to do with them, and he, did to put, like, he did the will of the Lord. But yeah. but Solomon, he allowed his his want for all these wives to distract him from the Most mm. High. You see what hey. I'm saying? Hey. So so okay. yeah, a man a man can have multiple wives, but, but that don't mean that he should have multiple wives. No. It, yeah. It's dependent. It's, you know. It depends on if he. But you know, you know, it's man. funny though. All the women I know who talk, who know about the Israelites, they always ask. That's the first question y'all always yeah, ask. Yeah, because like, what? No, we need to make it's this place. Because to make you their wife it's like we want to, to, you know. It's, we want to Wait, be. Wait. We want to I'm, be. I'm gonna man. answer your question. Hold on. Uh huh. Go ahead. What are you gonna say? Uh, how do you make a woman your wife? Is it because you had sex with them? Or did you commit to them? So the sex, the sex is consummation. Like y'all ever bought a car before, right? Yeah. When you get in the car, do you sign an agreement right then and there, or is it a process? It's a process. So you got to figure out the car, see if it's right for you. You got to yeah. drive it, test ride it, see if it's a good fit, and then what you do at the end? Then you take it. And you sign a contract, it. right? And you get finances to see if you can afford it. Yes. So sex is actually supposed to be when you're signing your name on a dotted line, okay. because when you have a bond, what do you do? You you, you blood it, right? You notarize it. So according to the Most High, when a man go into a woman and she bleed, when her hymen bleed, that's the blood that bonds them together. That's what the uh, intention of sex was actually supposed to be. Okay. That's why, you know, men, they're big on stuff like that. But we don't live in that time period no more. Yeah, right. But I would say this, a man shouldn't just be having sex with every female because even the scripture says he doesn't want the, the women of, uh, of Israel to be divorced, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're just dealing with a woman and you hear she here today and you go somewhere else, Really, the man should never do that. Yeah. You know, but we live in a society where they gonna do what they gonna do. You know, men, women, everybody. Can you just break up with your wife because you're mad? Nah, nah. Well, I'm gonna answer her question because yeah. she, what you say? You said something about what you say? You said she we're okay. Really what you say? We're okay? Because I could tell you a little. I mean, I me, look, hey, she the one who needs the questions for real. She needs the right. answers. Well, I'm gonna say this for all three of y'all. She needs the answers. Because y'all good friends, right? Yeah. yeah. So she probably tell you some of the things. That she, uh, she going through some different things than we're so, going through. So I'm gonna, say, I'm, gonna, so I'm gonna say this. Like, this is Isaiah form one. It says, in that day, seven women will take hold on one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our approach. So in that day, it says seven women will take hold of one man. So a lot of people say the will of the Most High is for a man to not have multiple wives. But there are scriptures that allude to men can do that. Because like all the women coming to try to. Oh, y'all don't celebrate birthdays. So like, do y'all know where the origins of birthdays come from? Or like the, the oh, modern practice? The zodiacs. Well, not just that. No? Okay. Y'all ever blown a birthday cake with candles on the top? Yeah. yeah. So when you blow a candle, that's not a, a, a biblical uh, custom. That's a heathen custom. They call her the mother goddess. I think her name is Astarte. It's like a mother goddess. You ever look at like a, a queen virgin? Are y'all familiar with like the Virgo song? Yeah. How it's like a woman? That's actually, if y'all do some research, that's a pagan goddess called the mother goddess. That Have y'all been keeping up with the Olympics and stuff like that? Have y'all ever seen that video by Ariana Grande called God is a Woman? Yeah. You yeah. notice how she had all those different gods? Mm -hmm. Those are a false deity. So when you have a birthday cake and you blow out the candles, you're baking a cake for a god called Astarte. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to celebration of a birthday, first and foremost, you're not supposed to do that. And the second thing, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. So what, we're not supposed to celebrate birthdays at let all? Me, I'm, gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you the context on it. What is the one great sin that God hates? Uh, I want to say adultery or like that's, you know, that's like, not the greatest thing. What what is the most? There's no sin greater than another though, so I don't know. What what, well, what, what, what I'm saying? I don't know. Let, let me say this. Praising a false god. Right. Yeah. So can you set yourself up to be a god? I thought you. Could. You can, right? Don't people call themselves gods and goddesses, right? Yes. So what I'm trying to tell you is that on the day of your birthday, 
if everybody is like praising you and, and worshiping you on that day, you set yourself up as a God. And the Most High said you should not have no other gods before me. So that's the aspect of modern day birthdays is people use it as worship. Cause yeah. have y'all ever like, oh my birthday's in a month, it's in yeah. two months, y'all bet you know. So yeah. you gotta be real careful. Now you wanna say like I think the most high, how old are y'all? You be like 20, 26, 20, you like what twenty four? How old are you? Okay, y'all look younger than me. So it ain't nothing wrong with thanking the Lord for, you know, being 26, 25. You know, if, if somebody want to do something nice for you, I can't really tell you not to do that because yeah. there ain't nothing in the Bible that say that. Yeah. But you ain't supposed to idolize yourself on your birthday. Right. Yeah. Like to feel like you above, like anything. Yeah. You know. it, 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 I ain't going to lie. I get like that sometimes a little bit. It happens. I mean, I, birthday. I do it sometimes. You be looking at your pictures on Instagram. You're like, yeah. damn, look at me. But you got to remember. Yeah. You gotta focus on the Lord, cause He's the one who put you in that position. No, you ain't lying he gave you everything. You know what I mean? So that's what it is with birthdays. But y'all got any other questions? Uh, so basically, uh, wait. So say about, one more. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What about women and women? Like lesbians? <laughs> I got you. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna you. <laughs> okay, cause yeah. <laughs> right, I got you. I got you. This is Romans uh, one. So what do y'all? What do y'all believe the Bible said about that? Before uh, I, I read it. Abomination. Yeah. Oh, damn. You quick with it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what, that's what I was told. Unfortunately, it's abomination. Okay, so here, Romans 1 and 27. I read verse 26. It says, For this cause God gave them unto vile affections, for even the women did change the natural abuse into that which is against nature. So, based off of your body and a man's body, are you naturally designed to be with one another? No. Yeah. Man and woman, you don't think yeah. so? Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. actually, you just kind of fit, right? Y'all yeah, yeah. ever be with one another? Y'all, yeah. y'all ever yeah. been around a man and you feel like his masculine energy complements yours? Yeah. So that's natural, right? Yeah. So this is what he says. He says, likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one to another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in them. Them. Wait, let me see. Oh yeah, and receiving themselves. To recompense of their error which was me so it says men took away from the natural use of women to be with men so by proxy do you think if a woman with a man goes to a woman with a woman that's like the same thing so, I mean, if, 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 if the man did it and it was wrong it's definitely wrong for the woman to do it right i mean y'all equal right well yeah, you know that's, yeah that's what they say right yeah so what i'm trying to tell y'all is that a woman's supposed to be with a man a man's supposed to be with a woman uh, if you go outside of that, it's called fornication. Y'all familiar with that? I heard that word. Committing adultery, uh, bestiality, having yeah. sex with your family members. Those are abominations. And those are, when the Most High say a sin and abomination, an abomination is like a higher level. You know it's an abomination when, you, well, for one, you shouldn't be fucking your blood or your cousin anyway. Yeah. But you know, your kids will come out blind. Yeah, they can. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad y'all stopped by. I hope y'all helped y'all out, all right? Thank you. Uh, no problem. Y'all be good. Y'all be good, all right? Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, y'all, brothers. So I want to get back into this. So basically, man, wisdom is going to be the stability of our time for another reason. I'm going to tell you why. When it comes to wisdom, wisdom is something that traverses time. So wisdom can tell you the where people failed in the past and how people are going to fail in the future. That's why the Bible has prophecies because it's the spirit of wisdom at work traversing through different time periods to show you what's to come and so you can learn from the things of the past so you can make better decisions because again the most high said be ye doers of the word and not hearers only so the reason why this is important and i'm explaining i'm gonna actually get this first let's go to the book of sirach and we're gonna go to chapter two and verse one so this is sirach chapter two <laughs> chapter two and i'll go to verse one it says my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thine heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. And that's that low estate. Remember, what did David say in Psalm 23? He says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. When you understand the, the heights of a mountain in the aspect of a valley, valley means a very low estate, a very, very low estate where there's death, plague, pestilences all around you. 
But what did David say? He said, I will fear no evil. When we come into that time, it's going to be an extremely low estate, a loss of family, a loss of friends, a loss of jobs, a loss of any type of status that you might have had. What else is, uh, what's another thing that's going to happen? You know, losing your jobs, your home, whatever it may be, because if you choose not to take the mark of the beast, which I pray none of you brothers do, none of you sisters do, you will not be able to be a part of the society, especially this digitized crypto, Bitcoin, uh, what is it called? Um, digital dollar society that we're moving into. You will not be able to function in society and you are going to be the drag of the society. You're going to be the low point of the society. Kind of similar to if you guys know the Hindu caste, the Hindu, the caste system is like the untouchables at the bottom of the bottom. So what is Hamash, what is uh, the most high say? He says, be patient when you're changed to a low estate. Because verse five, it says, for gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men in a furnace of adversity. Let's keep going though, right? We're going to go to um, verse nine. It says, you that fear your how hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. And what did I say about the spirit of wisdom? It's able to show you the times in the past, right? It says, look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the most high and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Woe be to the fearful heart and faint hands and the sinner that goes both ways. So when you have and understand the spirit of wisdom and you know that that immovable force behind you, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh is on your side. When you dwell in wisdom, no matter what may come upon you, you are still going to trust in the Lord. You are still going to abide in his fear. You are still going to be, he is still going to allow you to call upon him when you're in need. That is the spirit of wisdom. And that's why Sirach wrote this so you brothers can understand what we're going into. Because again, yes, all the things that are coming is a very tumultuous sign. We don't know exactly when that day is going to happen, but we understand it's leading unto it more and more, day by day, night by night, month by month, year by year. So you brothers have to understand on this walk, you are being refined through the trials of tribulation. And ultimately, why is that? Because again, uh, some brother from GMS like a couple years ago, they reposted a video about how when you have a potter and when you have a guy who does like the uh, work with like the meddling where he's forming the metal into a shape, he says you have to purify and refine the metal to the point where it shines and it reflects and you can see your reflection in it. Well, who are we looking towards as that example? We're looking at Yahweh Shah Hamashiach as the living example, as the example that the Most High set for us to follow. So as he continues to refine and allow us to come into that tribulation where we're dealing with all different types of persecution, he's going to start to see Yahweh Shah Hamashiach in us. And that's the true spirit of wisdom because when you understand the will, you have the knowledge of the Lord and you have the wisdom of what's came in the past and what's to come in the future, you understand if you be of the elect, you have steadfast faith, you are girded up in the word, you are going to, man, you, uh, the Lord is going to allow yourself to be transformed into that purified metal, into that purified ruby, that gem of gold. So ultimately what we are doing is we're going through that. And if the Most High be with you again, who can be against you? And I want to read this in the book of Ephesians. So this is the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to go to verse, uh, Salaki, no, 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 no. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in your house. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of the Most High, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan, of the devil. For we wrestle not against principalities, I mean, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So essentially you understand the will of the Lord and you understand we're battling against the dark forces of this earth that if the Lord be with you, he's going to allow you to be refining them times while everybody else is burnt up, falling, falling, folding because they have no real faith in the Lord. They put their faith in this society and this society is crumbling to the point where it's coming off of a cliff with all these false puppets like Trump, like Kamala Harris. 
Joe Biden that these people keep blindly putting their faith into, hoping and praying for a change, praying to the most high that they allow Trump to restore the country that is doomed to be destroyed because they have no real knowledge of the Lord. Well, let me read this. When you understand the will, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, I'll say it again. For the Most High has not given us the spirit of fear, meaning the fear of what's to come on this world, the fear of the tribulation, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, period, man. So that's what the Lord is going to give you. Not only that, but we're going to go to Isaiah 11 and 1 so you can understand the, the full context of the spirit of the Lord. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. It says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might. Uh, let me see. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So one of the aspects of the spirit of the Lord is that you will have true might. When people come and talk shit and say, I'm not a real Israelite, the spirit of might allows me to keep going. When you're dealing with the different demons that come into your body, that come into your mind and try to take you away from the Lord's will, when you see all these satanic agendas at the Grammys, at the Olympics, all over your screen, with all the different devices of Satan with these different politicians, you have the spirit of might to deal with all of this and it's preparing you for what's to come. So that way when the tribulation comes, you're not gonna be worried because you've given up your will. You're succumbing to the will of the most high. That's why when I hear all these things happening, I don't get into shock and I get into panic. Like, oh, I gotta go buy a thousand rounds of ammo. Yeah, I got a gun. Yeah, I got ammo. Or I gotta buy 10 gallons of water. Yeah, I got water. Or I gotta get 500 canned goods. Yeah, I got canned goods. I have those things because they may help me, but I understand the only person who can truly lead me through it is the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Shai. And that's why y'all brothers need to have true faith and not be worried about the things to come as in that you're not gonna be taken care of if you are a doer of the word. If you are truly following after righteousness, if you are abiding in the spirit of truth and of and, it's, um, and of wisdom and of understanding, right? Because understand this, for a lot of y'all who are lukewarm, a lot of y'all who are afraid, a lot of y'all who are deniers, who don't understand the will of the Lord, I'm gonna go to Revelation chapter three and we're, we're gonna go to, um, I think it's verse 14. This is the book of uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, I know thy works. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Because you saith I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I console thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed that the shame of your nakedness nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see and as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come into him and will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So Mashiach says, to him that overcometh these things, I will grant to sit on my throne. Because what did Mashiach say? When the brothers, I forgot the, their names, but they came, the sons of thunder, they came unto Mashiach and their mom was basically having them go back and forth about who is worthy to sit at his throne. Let's get that. What did Mashiach say? But yeah, brothers, I want to get Matthew chapter uh, 20 and verse 22. I'll read verse 21. It says, And he said unto her, What will thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. So the Zebedee's mom said she wanted her sons to sit on Mashiach's left hand and right hand side. And this is what he answered. He said, But Yahushua answered and said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, we are able. And he said unto them, you will drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. So the baptism in this context wasn't the water, wasn't the spirit. It was the baptism of fire, the tribulation that you go through. Just like Hamashiach was hung on the cross and left for dead, spat on, beaten, lashed. Uh, ridiculed, hated upon, denied, just like the brother came by and said, you're not a Hebrew Israelite. We are gonna go through all of those things in a different form, in a different fashion. But what did he say? He said, uh, but to sit on my right hand and my left is not on mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. 
And when you go into Revelation 3, what did he say about his throne again? He said, verse 21, to him that overcome it, will I grant you sit with me in my throne, even also, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So brothers have to embrace that. For those of you sisters who watch, you know, you have to embrace, you have to have a man who can build and gird you up in strength so you can be able to deal with all these things because only those people who have true strength in the Lord are gonna be the ones who can stand tall on that day. And the last thing I wanna get, let's go to the book of Isaiah. We're gonna go to chapter 43. I forgot what verse though. And I'll go to verse one. It says, but now thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob, and he hath formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Meaning you will not break when you go through that fire, when you go through those hard times, if the Most High be with you. So essentially, brothers, I hope y'all brothers got edifying from that. I hope y'all brothers got some more understanding. You were girded up. You build up your faith. And you continue to walk in this law, statutes, and commandments. And keep the testimony, the true testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, girding and preparing. And the last thing I want to get actually is a prayer. As y'all brothers know, since things are, you know, um, they're starting to get real out here, man. So let's get this. This is Luke chapter 21. And I'll go to verse 23. Uh, 30. I'll start at verse 34. It says, Take heed of yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So make sure y'all. Y'all keep that in y'all prayers every night if possible. So I give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Y'all brothers and sisters across the four corners of the earth, spreading this truth, spreading this gospel, and abiding in the word and testimony of this of the word. And I'll catch y'all brothers in the next video, man. Peace.